the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, uh, this is um, take number five for this video because I couldn't, uh, I tried to do it yesterday, but I couldn't because I was um, too emotional. And uh, I'm going to try and remain calm, I guess is the word. Um, first of all, I, I do want to uh, thank you guys for um, comments that you guys leave. There was one left today, uh, I believe from Stephanie. And it, it, there's comments that that like that, that, that really um, hit home with me and, and uh, you know, help me to, to kind of keep going. But I know the ministry is making a difference in people's lives. And so um, I just wanted to say thanks for that. Um, it's really, really appreciated. And, um, you know, you can always reach out to at the, at the parish with there's an email at the top of the channel. You guys feel free to, to leave a comment there as well. Um, if you want to reach, reach out personally. <clears throat> so I do want to say thank you for that. I do want to say thank you for you guys, uh, some of you guys purchasing the book. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that here in a minute. But um, I wanted to, I wanted to do, I, I responded very quickly to what happened uh, at the Olympics. And um, I posted a, uh, a post in the community section of the channel, uh, kind of pointing it out and uh, I was going to do a video on it and, and kind of address it a little bit and give my thoughts. Um, but I, I realized after about the fourth or fifth take that I needed to um, I needed to take some time and kind of digest it and try to understand why it, why it went so deep um, for me personally. Um, I, I do. Uh, I wonder why, I guess, my first thing my, that I'm kind of thinking on or that I pondered was why there weren't more um, priests and bishops that condemn this publicly. And I wanna get into the, the reasons why. Um, with that being said, I would also say, God bless you, Bishop Barron, for being one of the first American bishops to publicly condemn this and to speak out against it. And uh, he's right. If this was done against any other religion in the world, Islam or whatever, it would never ever be tolerated. Um, it's only Christianity that's mocked under the uh, banner of inclusivity. And um, that's really a lie. It's just a reason to, to um, that's the reason they use, okay? Um, the problem is, is, well, there's a number of problems. Uh, first of all, I would say pray for every single person that was involved in this because it was an abomination and an, and an immense offense to God. You know, um, the angels of heaven were looking on down that, uh, looking down on that in sheer horror. Um, whether or not these people understand what they are doing, I have no idea, um, but it was very obvious to me um, that they, they're obvious, this is demonic, it's evil, okay? And so you wanna talk about inclusivity uh, part of the thing about being a Christian and being included in that group um, is repentance. It's not just blatantly things in your face. So if I wanted to be a part of the gay or trans community, I doubt very much I would feel very welcome if I walked into one of their, you know, locations and started, you know, throwing holy water and blessed salt and saying exorcism prayers and deliverance prayers. I don't think that would be very inclusive. I wouldn't be included in that. And so, um, or if, you know, everyone knowing I'm a straight male, if I walked in and acted like I was uh, gay or I was uh, practicing homosexual or a trans person, um, I w you know, just to mock them, that wouldn't be seen as inclusive. And th so this is not in the, it's done in the name of being inclusive, but that's a lie. It's a mockery. And so a perfect example of this is, I'll, I'll give you a perfect example, is that, um, you know, if you, if you talk bad or uh, disagree with um, a woman of color, you know, namely the, the person that's seemingly running for president now, okay, then it's offensive and you can't talk about women that way and this, that, and the other. These are the same people that use pronouns and cannot define what a woman is. And that's the idiocy of it. And it's all it is is a game. This was more than an attack. 
um, or how should I say, for me, um, I, I took great offense to it. And I don't, I don't see it as mocking Christianity. I see it as an absolute attack um, on the sacrament of marriage on the highest of levels. And let me explain why. What they portrayed there was the Last Supper. And in doing so, by extension, uh, portrayed a mass, a, a holy sacrifice of the mass within the Catholic Church. It's in the Mass that the bridegroom comes out of heaven to feed his bride. It was at the first Mass that Jesus said, this is my body that will be given up for you. This is the cup of my blood of the new and eternal covenant that will be shed for you. This was more, this was more than a mockery. It was an attack not only against Christianity, but it was an attack against the Catholic Church. And they want to destroy the Catholic Church. I have a very hard time articulating, or maybe I think it's me more than anyone else. But I have, I seem to have a hard time helping people to make the connection between what we see going on in the political world and the spiritual reality of the war that's taking place right in front of us. Okay, The kingdom of God is the church on earth. Well, Satan has a kingdom too. And it's on earth as well. And this, this entire thing, this whole inclusivity woke agenda is being pushed and has been pushed by the United States. And I'm not talking about the majority of the people that live in the United States. I'm talking about politicians that want to push an agenda that is communist Marxist. And if you go and look at the post that I did, um, with the 45 or 40, 45, I think it was, communist goals. This was a, a congressional record. It's not just a piece of paper that was recorded into Congress, I think in the 60s. And you'd go down the list of that goals and you look at what they've accomplished. So when they talk about inclusivity, when they, when they push uh, all of these uh, transgender ideas and this race theory and all this stuff in our schools, um, they want to mutilate children. This is all communism. This is Marxist communism. It's an attack against marriage and the family. This is exactly what was prophesied at Fatima. Okay? If you want to be inclusive in the Catholic Church, or included in the Catholic Church, if you want to be included in Christianity, um, there's one big word that comes along with that, and it's called repentance. And so I'm going to ask everybody that sees this to pray for all those people that were involved in this and all the politicians and everyone else that's involved in pushing this woke agenda under the banner of inclusivity and, uh, you know, being tolerant and, and all this kind of stuff. And I'm going to ask you to pray for them because they, if they want to be included into the kingdom of God, they need to repent. And if they don't repent, they're going to go to hell. It's just that simple. And so I don't, I'm, I'm sorry if that hurts anyone's feelings. I really am. But at this point, you know, I, I, I see the game and the sham and I've seen it for a long time. So I really don't care if that hurts your feelings or hurts your emotions, you know, um, grow up, I guess, and get over it because I'm not going to back down from what the Catholic church teaches. I'm not going to back down from what the gospel teaches. And I, I'm surprised again, that there weren't more clergy members that came out and condemn this. This has happened more than once. Um, it was one of the reasons, from what I understand, of why, um, well, maybe one of the reasons, I think it was a part, a, a bigger, a small part of a bigger picture. But it was one of the things that, that uh, Bishop, Bishop Strickland did, was he went to go pray against this. Now, you don't have to go there and make a show of it and pray against it. But this kind of thing needs to be condemned. This kind of thing needs to be pushed out of society. It is not normal. It is not healthy. It is um, demonic. I'm sorry if that hurts your feelings. Um, again, I'm sorry. I don't care if it hurts your feelings. Grow up and get over it. I'm tired of having things pushed in my face and, and things being pushed into the Catholic Church on the far left progressive side with rainbow uh, altar tablecloths and whatever else. Okay? 
part of the gospel, according to St. Paul, is that the people that are, are doing these things and engaged in these things willingly and knowingly, okay, are under the influence of demons. That, that's in the Bible. So if you want to be inclusive, then go through a deliverance session and get rid of the problem, repent, and turn to Christ who wants to heal us. And so one of the reasons, again, that I saw this so offensive was because it, what, this wasn't an attack only on Christianity with a portrayal, a, a sickening portrayal of the Last Supper. It was an attack on the holy sacrifice of the Mass uh, within the Catholic Church because that is the heart of the Church, is the Mass. This is it. And I find it ironic um, that it happened under the banner of inclusivity just after we the church begins this Eucharistic revival. So you have the, the Blessed Sacrament being um, solemnly um, taken through the streets of cities around the globe. And then you have this in response to it. That's what this was. It was a response to it. And so, the, again, these people are trying to destroy the Catholic Church. And I don't know why there haven't been more clergy that speaks out about it. Maybe they're, they're, um, maybe they're afraid. Maybe they don't want to offend anyone. Maybe um, uh, they're afraid of getting in trouble with their bishop. Maybe the bishop's afraid, afraid of getting in trouble. Um, maybe they're afraid of losing their tax-exempt status. Maybe they're afraid of retaliation. Well, you know what? I can tell you right now all of those things are going to be taken away anyway. And it is things like this, this woke agenda, this, you know, uh, um, impurity and abortion and pornography and everything that the West is pushing all over the globe. This is the reasons, uh, the reason that cities like uh, Paris and, and countries like France will burn. And this is the reason states like California and cities like San Francisco will fall into the ocean and burn. These politicians have no fear of God. It, unfortunately, that the LGBTQ community and people that struggle with this type of uh, temptation are being used by communist Marxists in order to take over and transform the United States of America. And in transforming America, you transform the globe because everybody follows what we do. We lead it. And so this is a fulfillment of the prophecy of Fatima. That's how I see this because it is an attack on marriage at the highest of levels. It's an attack on the mass. They made a mockery of the sacrifice of the mass. You cannot separate what happened at the Last Supper, what happened at the crucifixion of Jesus, and the mass. There is no separation there. They are one and the same. And so be, be aware of, of the agenda that's being pushed here. Because, I, again, I have the hardest time articulating this, especially I've run into, well, a number of things, people, lay people and clergy, okay, where they just aren't making the connection between the kingdom of Satan and the kingdom of God. And they don't see that the political powers that be and uh, Masonic forces in the world that are extremely powerful and very wealthy are pushing this agenda in order to turn the entire globe communist. That's what they want. And they want to destroy the church. Kamala Harris went after a man just because he belonged to the Knights of Columbus and uh, another man, or maybe it was the same one, that exposed Planned Parenthood for selling baby parts. Kamala Harris is not a good person. Kamala Harris needs to repent. Kamala Harris will say anything to keep her power and her money and her votes. The clergy need to condemn this. It, it, it shouldn't be the job of lay people. And I've seen just a number of lay people uh, recently um, condemning this. And I, I'm not surprised. They're, you know, they beat me to the punch a little bit, I think, like I said, because I was going to lose my patience. I, I've done this video four times now. <laughs> and uh, you guys know that um, if you've been here since the beginning, you know that 
that uh, because I'm outspoken uh, in the political realm as well as in um, as far as religion and calling people to repentance, calling out certain sin for what it is. You guys that have been here from the beginning, you know, I've had strikes against me. I've had warnings against this channel. I've had videos deleted. Um, I've been um, censored for over two months. At, at one point, they, they just cut, completely cut me off the channel for two months. Um, I think I have a warning against me now. So I don't know if this, this, this may do it again. I don't know. If, if it does, we can still communicate through the email. Make sure you get the email at the top of the page here. Um, but this needs to be condemned. It needs to be condemned by the church because they're going to keep on pushing and pushing and pushing. This is actually a tactic of Saul Alinsky. I spoke of this before. Uh, Saul Alinsky was a Marxist uh, community organizer in Chicago in the 60s. And he wrote the book, uh, Rules for Radicals. <clears throat> and um, incidentally, he dedicated that book to Lucifer, okay? Um, but the idea was basically rules for radicals. What it does is it teaches radical Marxist communists within the country to take off the look of the radical, okay? Cut your hair, put on clean clothes, put on a suit and tie, and infiltrate the Democratic Party. This is one of the reasons that so many politicians that are... Um, very well known, won't release their college writings because they are Marxist. They're off limits to the public. They're Marxist. They want to do with, away with Christianity in uh, the United States. They want to destroy the Catholic Church. They have to destroy the Catholic Church. We are living in times that are worse than the days of Noah, in which that generation was absolutely removed by a flood. It's worse than the times of Lot. This is blatant. We have high school kids in our country waking up every morning that don't know if they are a boy or a girl. It's legal in many states in this country to, um, for a grown man to walk into a girl's locker room, sexualize the children. That's part of the 45 goals of the Communist USA. You want to see what's going on, all you need to do is read that list. They've been at it ever since the sexual revolution. Ever since the 60s, the early 60s. And it is a progressive plan. It spans over a period of time and it happens so that one generation that passes by doesn't realize the change. That's why, you know, people my age are looking at a country that they don't recognize that it, because it's already transformed. The kids that are in, in high school, they don't see anything wrong with what's going on because they're born right into it. And so the water's already boiling. But make no mistake about it, this is the reason the chastisements of God are coming. They're calling down the wrath of God upon their heads, okay? And so we need to remain uh, faithful to the church. We need to remain obedient to the magisterium. We need to pray for the clergy. I'm hoping that more of the clergy will come out and condemn this. I'm hoping Pope Francis comes out and condemns this publicly because it is constant a barrage of an attack on Christianity. It would never be stood. Bishop Barron was right. No one would stand for this if it was against Islam or if it was against any other religion in the world. It's only Christianity that they attack, that they mock it. Maybe because they know Christians are patient. Maybe. But it was an attack on the Mass. It was a mockery of the sacrifice of the Holy Mass. That's blasphemy and it's damnable. And so, Pray for these people. I love them. God loves them. I hope they repent because if they don't repent, they're going to go to hell. And every politician, every world leader on this globe that thinks they have so much power, you know what? Kings and queens go all the time. Your, breath, your life is nothing but a puff of smoke. And if you want to be inclusive in Christianity and in the Catholic Church, there is one single word that will make that happen, and it's called repentance. Okay. Darkness has nothing to do with light. Truth has nothing to do with lie. Righteousness has nothing to do with sin. So repent and pray for the world. Pray for this country. Pray the chapel of divine mercy every day. Offer in reparation for the sins committed by the United States, especially the sins of impurity and the sins of uh, abortion because that's what's going to bring it down. You know, a number of years ago, we had a parish mission 
here at the parish and, and the person that was doing it, I think it was a priest, he could only speak for two days and it was a three day mission. And uh, Christine Watkins and I, um, father asked if we would speak on the last day. And so it was just when the book, The Warning came out, Christine was kind of introducing her book and introducing to people what the illumination of conscience was. And then I was given an opportunity. Uh, Father wanted me to give my testimony on some of the things that I'd experienced and, and the things that I was shown. And it was the first time I'd ever done that publicly. And I'm looking at my parish family, people that I know. And I told them then, and I'm going to tell you now, I, I literally broke down in tears and told them that I've been praying for you. Because what we're going to see is a rise of communism and Marxism. And that's exactly what we are seeing. We have to rebuild the sacrament of marriage. Mar marriages need to be holy. If you're a single man like me, and you your vocation is to be married, like I believe mine is, you need to become what you want to attract. So if you want a woman that's going to be honest, don't lie. If you want a woman that's not going to be promiscuous, then put away the pornography. It falls on our shoulders. We have more responsibility as men to build up the family in righteousness and holiness and in sanctity than anyone else because we are the leaders of the family. Now, I understand. Believe me, I understand. In some cases, there are people that, that are not family members, marriage, you know, partners. They're not going to go along with it. It doesn't change the fact that we have to sanctify ourselves. And if we as men don't stand up and start speaking truth to the lie, then they're going to continue to take ground. I can. I, I left a couple of uh, posts here, um, shorts that I did on California, just kind of laughing at the laws and how silly they are. They don't make any sense. They're really not silly. They're doing it on purpose. But some of the responses, well, why don't you just leave? Well, I could, I could probably do that other than the fact that I would, I would have to take my son away from his mother. So that's one reason that I don't, um, I, uh, or I would have to leave him and not see him. That's another reason I don't, but the, you know, the main reason, I think the main reason that I don't is because I'm tired of watching Catholics, especially Catholic men run away from evil rather than facing it and speaking truth to its face. Afraid of persecution, afraid of getting in trouble, afraid of losing their job. Um, if we keep giving ground, they're going to end up taking the whole country. You'll end up in a little corner. Just like this, I said, with the, you know, the priests that are afraid of getting in trouble by their bishop, they're afraid of getting in trouble, uh, you know, um, offending someone in the parish, uh, losing their tax exempt status. All of that is coming anyway. It is what is coming. So you might as well start fighting against it now because we, there is a small window of time that, that this can be turned around like Roe v. Wade was turned around when the whole nation began to pray that it was overturned. It doesn't take a lot of faithful Christians to change even the laws of nature if we would just pray and fast. And if we would pray with the heart, pray sincerely and pray with faith. I would say the same thing for the women. If you're single and your vocation is called to be married, become what you want to attract. Sanctifies yourself through grace, through faith, through prayer. The attack is on marriage and family. And, and it, that's the reason that I've had to do this video now four or five times because I, I got so upset, um, mainly because I know the beauty of the Eucharist on a very, very personal level. The unbelievable love that is there. And it is the Mass, it is the Eucharist that Jesus is offering to the world in order to heal it. And what I watched happen, uh, the images that I saw were an absolute mockery of love. And so again, I don't, I don't hate these people. I don't know these people. I don't, I'm not homophobic. 
I'm not transphobic. Um, I'm a Christian and I love everybody, but I hate the sin. And if I don't, if I do love you, I have to say repent or you're going to go to hell. All of us need to repent. All of us have things to work on. But I, I woe to the one who would continue to live in sin and mock the gospel of Jesus Christ. And woe to these politicians that would push this woke agenda onto our children. Well, they themselves live in palaces. So in ending, I do want to um, tell you guys, thanks for uh, the ones that have purchased uh, the books Beyond, uh, Beyond the Second Veil and Concerning Chloe. Uh, the Beyond the Second Veil book is now it, it's on a global distribution. And um, I did find it on eBay. They kind of doubled the price. I will obviously try to make a profit, but I think it's almost, it's over $30, $37, I think they want for it from eBay. So Probably wouldn't be a good idea going there. It's probably better just to go to the website and buy it, uh, Lulu.com. I'll leave some. Uh, I'll leave the links in this uh, in the description on this video. Um, the other thing that I would say about this is that I, I you're going to come away with a lot better understanding of the overall plan, salvific plan of God. You're going to come away understanding how. Jesus filled, fulfilled the law in so many ways. So it's, it gives a lot of light and a lot of understanding to the lay Catholic. I am absolutely positive uh, through prayer and discernment that there have been a number of people that are very educated that have picked this up, probably to um, uh, go through it, critique it, um, maybe even try and pick it apart or find something wrong with me uh, or wrong with it. So, you know, if that's the case, good luck with that. The other thing I would say is if there is something that a scholar or something finds that does need to be corrected, please let me know and that will be done. Um, the other thing I want to tell you about this is if you read it, um, take the time to, to maybe go through it slowly again. And what I want you to do is I want you to um, compare it to what you're hearing on the internet because this book is filled with prophecy, but it's prophecy that comes directly out of scripture. It comes directly out of the Bible. It's not you know, oh, you know, th this person told me that or St. Michael told me that. What I want you to do is I want you to compare what you're reading in this book, which is solid prophecy, because it comes right out of the Word of God, compared to what you're hearing on the Internet. Because I can tell you right now, one of the things that this book is going to do is expose a bunch of false prophets. I didn't realize that until a few days ago when I read through it myself. Um, it's going to expose a lot of a lot of false prophets. It's also going to bring, I think, maybe some understanding to, um, or a deeper understanding to some who um, whose hearts are really, really in the right place. I believe that, and um, give the uh, give them a deeper understanding of of kind of what we're looking at and what we're facing because we are we're we're living in the last days. And I know there may be some out there that laugh at that. Go ahead and laugh. You won't be laughing soon. You won't be laughing soon. There's a reason that the angel said to pray the chapel of divine mercy every day and offer it in reparation for the sins committed by the United States. And there is absolutely no doubt in my mind it was because of the sins of abortion and what is being pushed with this woke whole trans agenda stuff. They're destroying our children. That's what they want. They want to destroy marriage. They want to destroy the family. They want to destroy our children. And they want to destroy the Catholic Church. And again, it is sins like this that cry out to God uh, for judgment. This is sins like this, mockeries like this, public mockeries, is the reason that the wrath of God will fall upon the world. They're calling down the wrath of God upon their own heads. And that's why they need to be prayed for. And that's why they need to be called to repentance. So please pray for everyone that was involved in this. Okay? It's not about being inclusive. If it was being inclusive, you wouldn't have to mock the Catholic Church. You could have went out there and done your little dance or whatever you wanted to do. Fine, you're included in the Olympics. You want to be included in the Catholic Church? Repent. It doesn't matter. Even if the church were to include, 
which it does already, I think. On, I mean, if you look at the churches in disarray, Jesus will separate the sheep from the goats. The church is being sifted now and our faith is being tested. Pray for the Holy Father. Stay obedient to the magisterium. And I'm not talking about blind obedience. Um, again, I do thank you for the comments. I, I think it was Stephanie that left one this morning. Um, I, that meant a lot. That really soothed me. <laughs> I got to tell you, because I, like I said, this is the fourth time around on this video. And uh, um, I, I was greatly offended. Greatly offended. You know, um, they called Pope Francis out on, on the little word he used because that hurt their feelings and they were offended. And the Pope apologized. And so, I wonder if they'll apologize for this or if they'll just keep using the excuse of we just want to be included. We just want to include, we, we want to include everyone. It's an amazing thing. I don't know how people can't see the lie. I hope President Trump calls Kamala Harris out on that. Okay? You want to take guns away from people so that people are more safe. Chicago has the strictest gun laws in the United States, and it also has the highest number of homicides. And if you want people to be safe on one hand, out of one side of your mouth, how can you promote abortion all the way up to birth, killing and slaughtering millions of babies? How can I disrespect or anyone else disrespect her um, in the way they talk just because she's a woman, but she can't define what a woman is? You see the double talk? It's all a lie. It's all a, massage, a, a mirage. And they do it to promote an agenda. The way you do this is you don't get involved into, you don't get caught up in the debate and going back and forth with these people. You proclaim the truth. And the truth comes directly out of the word of God. It is for this reason that the justice of God is coming upon the world. And, you know, there may be some out there that don't believe me. There may be some out there that want to call me crazy. Um, First of all, I didn't ask for this. Second of all, I have never taken anything upon myself. Third, I have an obligation. And fourth, I don't care anymore. It doesn't matter whether anyone believes it or not. I know what I was shown and I know it was a warning. And God himself, Jesus Christ himself, whether or not I make it into heaven, will be my witness, at least on that. So this country, this world needs prayer. We need to double down on prayer. Okay? Hate the sin, love the sinner. But this is going to get worse. There, it is going to turn into an absolute mockery. As a matter of fact, as Peter says, in the last days, scoffers will come. They will scoff at you and me. They will laugh. Where is the promise of his coming? And it'll be right about that time they're going to get the answer to that question. So again, um, if you haven't gotten the book, Beyond the Second Veil, get the book. Um, again, it's solid. I'm absolutely positive of that. Um, also, uh, concerning Chloe, the more uh, the more we, we sell of those, the, the more we're able going to be able to give to the Women's Crisis Pregnancy Center. That may by information or... Um, you know, pamphlets and things that, that women read uh, when they go in there that could actually save a baby's life, okay? So, that, you know, this is not a small thing. We're fighting to save children, you know? We, we need to save the family. Um, also, again, thank you uh, guys for the, the ones that have purchased the book so far. Thanks for the, for the comments and, and uh, you know, the, the nice comments about it and that you like it and things like that. I'm really glad. Um, always open to uh, constructive criticism. And again, thanks again for the, you know, just the comments every now and then when you guys say, you know, this video was good or, or that video made a difference. You know, the like I said, the, the, the comment I got from Stephanie this morning was just, it was exactly what I needed because I was so frustrated with all the stuff that I see going on. It, it's hard not to get overwhelmed and, um, you know, lose your cool or something. And that's not really unheard of. Moses lost his cool. You know, hopefully I don't get to that point, but I will say if you want me to be so inclusive to where you decide to break in out my door, come in and start taking off your clothes in front of my kid, you're, you're probably going to meet your maker really soon. Okay. So, um, <laughs> that's not a threat. That's a promise. Okay. I'm inclusive. 
You want to do what you want to do, you do it over there. You want to do what you want to do, do it outside of the church. Because even if you try to bring it in the church, you're not going to be a part of the church. The church has to do with sanctity and, and righteousness and repentance. We're called to holiness, not to mock God. So I, I hope there's an apology um, from these people that put this on because it was completely and totally uncalled for. Um, I see it personally as an attack, not only on marriage and family, but an attack on the very heart of the Catholic Church, which is the Mass. Um, I hope they do apologize, and I hope I see some more priests and bishops condemning this publicly. We can't, if we don't, if we say nothing, if we say nothing, then we are guilty of the sin of omission. If we say nothing, then it shows in our hearts, we don't care what happens to these people, whether they repent or not. And that is the church's mission. The church's mission is to go proclaim the gospel to all nations. Part of that gospel is repent. Turn away from sin. You know, people, people don't like to hear this message. Unfortunately, we hear it more in Protestant non-denominational churches or uh, Christian centers, worship services, than we do in the, in the church. You know, at least that's there. I mean, they distort scripture bad enough. That's bad enough as it is. But at least they're calling people to repentance. You know? So, anyway, um, that's it. Again, really, really thanks, you guys, for the for the comments. Anytime you want to reach out personally like that, like I say, uh, that's why the, the email at, is at the top of the channel. Um, for, for comments or if you want to reach out or you want to, um, you know, there's something um, you want to discuss personally, uh, anything like that, that's why that email is there. Um, you know, leave comments for the parish, for my pastor, for whatever. Even if it's a criticism, you know, we can take it. I can handle it. Um, but anyway, if you haven't got a chance, um, go buy the, the book, Beyond the Second Veil. Uh, get concerning Chloe. And, um, you know, let's try to save some babies. And um, pray. Please pray for the world. Because we're, we're in a really, really bad situation there, you know, these uprisings and these riots and things, they're caused, you know. Um, you'll notice that in the United States, when certain politicians are in power or in the White House, people can burn down buildings, literally burn down cities, and they do nothing about it. But God forbid a Christian or a soldier or a police officer run in to save American flag from being burned. You see, they're, they're, this is what the transformation of America looks like. And if you transform America, you transform the world. Had, had the United States not been pushing this entire woke agenda, that would have never happened at the Olympics. It would have never happened. We're the ones pushing it. And our politicians are the ones pushing it. And we, the people, are responsible for that. And we've let them get far enough now to where they may be just declaring uh, mass amnesty for votes. And it's over. That's the whole reason for the open border. Make no mistake about that. It's not about immigration. They could care less about these people. What they care about is transforming the country. And they are Marxist and they are communists. Not all of them, okay? There are some, some normal liberals there. There are some um, ancient Democrats there. Um, there are some Republicans that are still, you know, in, how do you say, uh, well, regularly conservative, um, but then it happens on both sides of the aisle. You have warmongers on the other side. There's a lot of money to be made with war. And um, so pray. Pray for the church. Pray for the priests and bishops. Pray for the Pope. I'm, I'm hoping that the bishops will come out and condemn this. I'm hoping that whoever put that on in Paris would apologize to the church. Um, I'm hoping that God's grace uh, sustains us, which it will. I'm praying for their conversion. It's, I, it, I, don't, I don't hold any anger in my heart against them. Um, I was outraged at what I saw. But against the people, you know, they, they're blind. I, I love them just the way I would love anyone. But they need to repent. And we need to pray for conversions. Because the, either they know what they're doing and they've given in to that side of it, um, or they're ignorant. It's probably just a little bit of both. So 
Anyway, again, thanks for the comments. If you haven't um, got the books, go check that out. Um, and uh, pray for the Pope, pray for the priests, pray for the bishops, and pray the chaplain of divine mercy every day and offer in reparation for the sins committed by this country, especially the sins of impurity and the sins of abortion. Okay, remember this Catholic man that um, saying nothing is a sin of omission. Remember that. And the clergy should remember that too. The sins of omission. Look that one up in the Catholic Church, in the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Okay. May God bless you. May he keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. And may he grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.